Hello, my name's Mike, and I'm going to do two little videos for you um, around developing something with words and writing something down. So I hope you're with me because you enjoy writing and you enjoy reading because the two go together. Um, if you're not, you're in the wrong workshop. No, but there are there's different ways for people to express themselves. They can express themselves through ballet, through break dancing through playing an instrument and composing wonderful tunes. People can express themselves through art and through various sculptures or paintings. I tend to do it. The medium that I've chosen uh, in my life is words. And I think I've chosen it really because my father kept a diary all his life and he, he gave me a love and a whetted my appetite for using words. And then I've read widely and enjoyed reading things and that's really stimulated me to push my own writing forward and that's hope hopefully what I can do for you as well so when we're writing there's different ways of writing you can write as I say a diary you can write a poem you can make write a novel a story we're going to concentrate I'm going to concentrate today on poems and poetry and then next week I'm going to concentrate on stories and novels because I have um, had a go at both and enjoyed doing both now let's get to the bottom of this thing they call poetry what is poetry? Just for you, um, you'd have come across it, you'd have studied it maybe, I don't know, but poetry is a short form of expressing yourself and it's a form that has rhythm. It's got to have sort of rhythm attached to it. Now, I don't want to worry, and we're not going to, we haven't got time to go into the science of poetry and talking about different forms and the physics of poetry, you know, iambic pentameter, which Shakespeare used a lot, which is ten syllables, de dum de dum de dum, gallop a pace, you fiery footed fiends. Yeah, because you can hear that, can't you? So when I do count the clock that tells the time, that's iambic pentameter. Now some poetry, depending on what you're writing, and be aware there's loads of things you can write with poetry. You can write blank verse, free verse, epic poetry, narrative poetry, you can write haikus, sonnets, you can write limericks and villanelles and ballads. There's all sorts of different types of poetry. For us, just for what we're doing today, I want to concentrate on free verse. Now, free verse has been going since about the 1800s, and that's a form of poetry where really you don't have to worry too much about fitting it into a particular format. You can actually, um, you can just pretty much enjoy the words and play with the words and and you know you don't have to worry too much about form so we're going to do free verse you can still within free verse you can use little devices like repetition and getting phrases that keep repeating themselves so you can create a sort of rhythm with free verse but um, that's what we're going to do now so that's our form free verse next we're going to think about what's the subject what's the topic for our poem well, the topic for our poem has been set for us by Arts Active, the wonderful Arts Active who are putting on these workshops. And Arts Active really wants something that's around nature. And more particularly, they've uh, been inspired this year by Peter and the Wolf, which is a lovely little story about you know a boy and a wolf and a grandfather and a duck and a bird. And it's got all these opposites in them that, that create this tension in this story. Um, so, But for us, writing a poem, we're going to think about the woods and we're going to go into the woods i'm going to take you up into the woods shortly and then when we get in the woods i'll probably read you a few poems of the, the other poets have written when they've used the woods as a starting point and then we're going to talk about that and then we're going to think about how that can evoke something for us because one of the hardest things so we've got our form we've got our subject um and we've got our audience because your audience is i hope you're going to write something and send it in to Arts Active, and then they'll send it on to me, and we're sharing our writing then. Um, if you don't want to, you don't have to. You might just be writing for yourself. As long as, you, as long as you're pushing yourself, don't stay, you know, get your, that's why it's good to show other people and put your writing out there, because hopefully people are usually very kind and helpful and um, with, you, with your early work, and they'll, they'll help you. Um, so send them in. So you've got your audience. But the... The hardest thing with any writing, the same as actually music or painting, is where to get your inspiration, to find your angle. It's all right to say we're going in the woods, but what angle am I going to, am I going to, am I going to write from the perspective of Red Riding Hood? Am I going to write from the perspective of the tree? What angle am I going to come in on? Because someone like Banksy, the graffiti artist, now people argue as to whether he's a 
proper artist or not. But what I like about Banksy is that he sort of like finds a way in that no one else has sort of thought of before. And that sort of gives him a, a sort of originality. Say, for example, he did once uh, this one, the Mona Lisa. And he thought, what can I do with the Mona Lisa? And he gave her a rocket launcher. So although, and I just think, I think Banksy's good in terms of angles, because I think as a writer, I'm always looking for angles, for ways in. When we're writing about the woods, what I'm going to have to do is find a way in that no one's thought of before. He's put the Mona Lisa with a rocket launcher, so he's combining the beauty of art with the terrible uh, destruction of war. So he's got love and, you know, war and peace and peace in there, art and killing. He's putting those two things deliberately together because they jar against each other. So we've got to find our angle. So let's go up in the woods. Let's see what that sort of, how that inspires us in some way and get put ourselves in that setting and then we'll think about our piece of work i'll see you in a bit in the woods well i'm deep in the woods now and uh, as you can see all around me it's misty it's wooded and there is nowhere nowhere to go but these woods and you're stuck in them and misty. You can imagine now, you can imagine some Germanic tribe horde pouring out of these woods, you know, rough hewn and prehistoric and metalled and sword, sword thirsty. Um, and you can almost imagine orcs, super orcs running out here, you know, thinking Lord of the Rings. And you can think, of, and then you can think of Red Riding Hood through here, Red Riding Hood. And a wolf following, tracking her as she walks through these woods. It's brilliant, isn't it? And um, I'm going to just, um, let me just put this down somewhere on this. There's a little rock here. I'm going to put this down and I'm going to read to you. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see that all right. But I want to read to you just a poem by Gerald Manley Hopkins, because we're talking about writing a poem. And this is actually about felled poplars. And you might notice these trees around here where I am now are, I think, all dying. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on trees. And I think they're dying. So this one, Gerald Manley Hopkins, he wrote this in 1879. And it's about aspens and poplars that I think are going to be cut down. And uh, he didn't like it. He was an environmentalist even then, back then. My aspens, dear whose airy cages quelled, quelled or quenched in leaves, the leaping sun, all felled, felled, are all felled, of a fresh and following rank, not spared, not one that dandled or sandaled, shadowed that swam or sank, on meadow and river and wind-wandering, weed-winding bank. Oh, if but we knew what we do, when we delve or hew, hack and rack, the growing green, since country is so tender to touch her being so slender, that like this sleek and seeing ball that will make no eye at all. Now, I'm not going to read all of it, but I just want to give you a flavour of people who've written in terms of this one, for example, another one by Houseman. Loveliest of trees, the cherry now, is hung with bloom along the bough and stands about the woodland ride wearing white for Easter tide. Now, of my three score years and ten, twenty will not come again, and take from seventy springs a score, it only leaves me fifty more. And since to look at things in bloom, fifty springs are little room about the woodlands I will go to see the cherry hung with snow. So he's actually saying he's twenty, and of his three score year and ten, 70 years, which people expected to live then or hoped to live then, he's saying that in those 70 years, he'd, he'd got 50 springs more to see the cherry because it's just so cherished for him. Now, when we're talking about writing here, I'm going to write down some things that, um, that I can put into a poem because this mist, it is like prehistoric. You might, as I said to you earlier, you might get this when it's sunny and because the forecast tomorrow is supposed to be warm again. I'm getting... I'm getting wet here, it's dripping on these books of mine. And um, But I'm going to write some things down that we can use. I'll be back when I've got paper and pen ready. 
Right, okay, I'm back. I've got paper and pen. I say that, I've actually just found something else in my bag, which I thought I've got to read you because I'm a great fan of Dylan Thomas, and Dylan Thomas is one of Wales' finest writers. And the great thing about Dylan Thomas is, in terms of writing, no matter what you're writing, whether you're writing a villanelle, a sonnet, or whatever, free verse, whatever, whatever you're writing, using the words to bash them around and colour and paint a picture, that is... that. And if you... Dylan Thomas is famous for loading his sentences with adjectives so that they're almost syntax heavy. They're so loaded with these adjectives. So I just want to share a bit of this, which you'll probably know. It's, um, you know, the beginning, to, to, to begin at the beginning, it's under milk wood. But I just want to use it to show you when you're writing, if you can make your writing rich with adjectives, rich with descriptive words. So this is, to begin at the beginning, it is spring. Moonless night in the small town, starless and Bible black. The cobble streets silent and limping invisible down to the slow black. Slow black, crow black, fishing boat bobbing sea. The houses are blind as moles and all the people of the lulled and dumbfound town are sleeping now. Hush, the babies are sleeping. The farmers, the fishers, the tradesmen and pensioners cobbler, school teacher, postman and publican, the undertaker and the fancy woman. Young girls lie bedded soft or glide in their dreams. The boys are dreaming wicked or of the bucking ranches of the night and the jolly rogered sea. The horses sleep in the fields, the dogs in the wet nosed yards and the caps cat nap in the slant corners or lope sly on the roof. I won't read more but you can get the feel. I just love the way he paints that picture of the night, the night in the sort of Welsh fishing village, and it's just beautiful. So now I'm going to stop again because now I want to get paper and pen and write down what we'd write about here. See the mist behind me? Something could just, a Viking could run out of that mist, and I wouldn't be surprised. Red Riding Hood with a basket. Help! I wouldn't be surprised, but I'll just stop a minute and then I'm going to write some things down with you. Well, just in case you were worried about me. What do you mean you weren't? <laughs> now, I found a path. I uh, Luckily, and as I say, I'm okay because I do know these woods pretty well so I can find it. I was genuinely lost and it was the mist that really threw me, as it often does with lots of walkers and hikers. Um, but I found a path and I know I'm on the right track now because, look at this, look. When you find a tossed beer can on the path, you know that civilization, as we call it, as we know it, isn't very far away. Um, and it does make you angry, doesn't it, that people just toss things into the woods and, and blight the landscape. Maybe that will go in the poem. Right, I'm nearly home. Um, I say another half an hour and I'll be home. I'll speak to you then. Cheers. Right, here we are, back home from a very steamy, misty walk in the woods. Now. What have, we, what have we got that you can go with? What I'd like you to do is, I don't know whether you can get out to woods or where you are, or whether you just go out in your garden and enjoy a bit of garden, but I want you to just think about something that ties you to the woods, to nature, to growth and decay, those things. And I want you to do that, but I want you to think about as well, find an angle on something that you're going to talk about on that theme of nature, really. Find an angle and a way in. Now I'm not quite there yet because I've I'm going to share with you just what I've written, just the notes I took because uh, I didn't share it with everyone because there was rain all over it. But I want you to remember as well. Remember the um, the Gerald Manley Hopkins said the wind wandering weed winding bank. He was putting that alliteration and those, those adjectives in there to great description. Then you've got of course the Dylan Thomas, the crow black, slow black. Fishing boat bobbing sea. The boys are dreaming wicked of the Jolly Roger Sea. You enjoy using language. So keep yourself reading and keep yourself enjoying language. Play with language. That's the thing, isn't it? Play with it and enjoy it. Now this is the this is the notes I'd taken and um, just while we were there and I got lost on the way back as I think I might have alluded to in one of the videos. But I'm thinking of something. That, you know, I I just put this. These are notes. We're deep in the woods, the misty, simmering, wordless, wandering woods, ancient spaces of long lost foraging and forged metals. Beware the faintly falling fog, 
Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Inhabiting our recurring Red Riding Hood dreams, we're deep in the woods, cocooned in plastics, soul-searching our shivering save-the-environment credentials, trying our very best to stay on the righteous path, breeding decay over the last frontier as the rain falls and we're deep in the woods. Now, that, that's these are just notes. Whether I've got something there that I will develop, but I will try and I will, like you, like I'm asking you to do, I'm going to go away and I'm going to play with that and get that because there's that theme of... Is that theme of the plastics as well, isn't there, and the environment stuff? And then there's those those fantastic woods that when you get in them, you can almost be, you know, they say the rain falling is the same rain that fell on the dinosaurs, and you can just you can just be in touch with that. I remember working with a park ranger in Kafili, park ranger, what a great job! And he said to me, he was talking to me about the life cycle of an oak tree. He said, the "Thing about an oak tree, Mike," he said, "is it takes three hundred years to grow." Then it it will sit for three hundred years, and then it'll take three hundred year another three hundred years to decay and die. So that whole life cycle of an oak tree nine hundred years, three hundred to grow, three hundred just to sit. I love that when it just sits and says, "Oh, I'm an oak tree now," and then three hundred years to decay and die. And like our life cycle, our life cycle is the same. And many have written about that, haven't they? Our three score years and ten that was alluded to. So when you go to those woods, you are in touch with something that sort of like lasts forever. Those spaces that were the same when Houseman was writing about them, the same when Dylan Thomas and the same for us. You can be in touch with something that's a wonderful theme that runs through humanity of nature and us and our connection to this wonderful blue planet. And um, there we are sailing through the universe. And so... Finding an angle, I'm not sure I've found my angle yet, but I've just got some notes and I've jotted some things down. So I'm going to go away and write something that's going to be called Lost in the Woods, In the Woods, I don't know. But I'm going to write something that's going to be free verse, where I'm going to enjoy playing with that language even more and ideas. Remember the Banksy bit and finding your angle and your way in. And just enjoy getting something. But first, take yourself out somewhere to your garden as the last resort and if you haven't got a garden just go off somewhere and find a park or something and just sit there and get some get some notes and, and you know don't be afraid to jot things down and if you like me when you're up in the woods no one's going to see you anyway but just jot things down and stuff because that's what writers can do record things play with ideas find angles and sculpt something into something that can paint a picture for someone and when it's really good other people read it and think Oh, yeah, I feel like that because somebody you inhabit a world that we all inhabit and then we all we're all in this one world together and we can help each other understand it a little bit better. OK, well, I'll see you next week and um, have some fun. Have a go. and I'll see you next week. Cheers. Ta-da. <laughs>